um, last week we went kind of quickly through the Mona Lisa. We went over uh, uh, the great artist known as Leonardo da Vinci. And so this week we're going to touch a little bit more on the Mona Lisa and why it's so significant to art history and the world. So uh, the first fact is many may not know how much this uh, painting is estimated or uh, praised at. And so currently it's estimated to be worth a billion dollars. And for it to be its size, you know, we, we would usually think it's super large, but it's small. That's like the lightest billion dollars, you know, ever. And take a moment to think about uh, why is the Mona Lisa so uh, important or the history behind it. So let's talk a little bit behind the Mona Lisa. Uh, remember the subject's name is Lisa del Giaconda, Giacondo or Lisa Gerardini. Um, it can go back and forth because her surname was her husband's name, so she has both names attributed to her. Um, remember it was commissioned, so that means that her husband asked Leonardo da Vinci to make it for him of her, um, and it was commissioned in Italy. Uh, and remember, Italy is the home of the Renaissance in Venice and Florence, so it makes sense. This piece from the High Renaissance took place in Italy. Everyone in the story is Italian, okay? And um, it did cost a lot of money at the time that it was commissioned, but that's okay because Lisa's husband was a really famous and wealthy silk merchant, um, so he could afford it. That's about it, about behind the Mona Lisa. Things that we have on our paper is a pyramidal structure. And I have a few examples to kind of show us how that worked and uh, why they use it so much throughout our art, uh, and, and especially during the Renaissance period. So, Leonardo da Vinci, he composed this with the pyramidal structure, uh, the triangle. And you can see from the bottom, it's heavy, like the base of a pyramid would be. And as you move up, we go to what we actually want to show, the focal point, the most important part of the painting, which is at the tip top of the pyramid. This term was fumato, it's a painting technique. which involves blending the edge between colors so that there's a soft transition. It's Italian for smoke, and it just means, thank you, you told me this, hazy or smoky. Um, and you can see this is a photograph, but we do that in painting by using really seamless blending techniques, okay? There's no harsh outlines between dark and light. They blend seamlessly together to create drama and intrigue. And you'll see some examples on the next slide of how we've done that in other paintings, right? It creates a really high contrast. Sumato uses contrast by, to create intrigue by depicting these dramatic, hazy, smoky conditions, right? It's a really good example of Sumato. We have the darkness in these clouds, right? We have water, clouds, light, and they too, you can't really tell where the light and where the darkness ends and begin. It creates mystery and it creates this kind of imbalance or intrigue or um, tension within paintings. And that happens in the Mona Lisa. All right, the next thing is atmospheric perspective. This is a term with a fancy name, but it's actually quite simple. It's just distance in painting and how we depict that. So in this example, you can see when we have objects that are close to us, like these trees right here, they're in the foreground, they're closer to us, they're darker, they use truer colors, and they're larger. Now when things are farther away, they get lighter, they get hazier and smokier, and they appear smaller, right? That's the illusion of depth within a painting. So right here, the person I have very close to me is larger, but way back as you go farther and farther away, I can't see you as well. So you get lighter and lighter, and that's how we make that in paintings, right? That's just like when you look at the mountains, you know, you're looking at a picture of mountains, the ones close to you are darker, and the ones farthest away are pretty hard to see because all, all the gases in the atmosphere and clouds and haze and smoke, and that is atmospheric perspective. Leonardo da Vinci did this in the Mona Lisa when he has the trees and the water closest to us, the darkest, and the stuff farthest away, the lightest. This creates space, right? Not everything is jammed up on the same plane in the, in the painting. It is spaced out, and it goes back into space. So, right, since 1503, um, there's been plenty of different variations and riffs on the Mona Lisa, everything from like a comic version to a pen and ink version, to different paintings, different colors, different filters, etc. 
you're going to be able to make a self-portrait inspired by Mona Lisa, but you'll be making some decisions that truly make it your own. You're gonna be deciding what kind of clothes you're wearing, if you have bling or ice, or if you have a really cool background, right? Maybe you'll put our city behind you, or you'll put where you're from, or a river or a lake, anything that represents you to take your own spin on your Mona Lisa self-portrait. Throughout this uh, project, you'll be able to find this uh, PowerPoint in Schoology, but I have uh, some guidelines for what I expect of you guys with this project. So uh, I want you to use three of the techniques discussed earlier to create the portrait. So those might be some of the terms in your paper or some of those different techniques or styles that you can use. I want you also to use a good range of value to create depth. Like Leonardo da Vinci, how he used depth to you know, uh, make his subjects or uh, characters look better, I want you to uh, use that same technique as well. There will be sketches required for this. I want to see a plan for your artwork. I don't want you to just jump in and say, I'm doing this, because that's not how Leonardo approached it. He had different plans and different concept sketches, and I expect the same from you guys as well. I would love for your craftsmanship to be you know, nice and neat, clean, tidy. So try to you know, take some time to make sure everything is, is nice and neat. No tears, smears, or muddy colors. You know, don't roll it up and throw it in your backpack. Make sure you keep it nice and, and clear and, and nice. Uh, also, I want the gradients or the different tones to be smooth and transition, so a nice blend. Show that you know how to uh, do the different values, shading, and, and all these different techniques. Hey, how's it going guys? Uh, I know we started this new Mona Lisa project and it's been kind of confusing on what's going on. So I'm making this video just to clarify some things that's, uh, that we're going to be covering and expecting for this project. So first off, I have a folder inside of Schoology. It's named um, Photo Upload. So all that folder was for you to upload your reference photos. So um, for the Mona Lisa project, you're going to be taking a photo of yourself. Um, you might need somebody to take the photo for you. And you're just going to um, think about the Mona Lisa and how we discuss the pyramidal structure. So you want to almost uh, use the pyramidal structure as a template. So take a picture with your hands folded similar to the Mona Lisa. And I want you to think how you can use the pyramid composition to emphasize or, or make everyone focus on you and allow you to stand out from your background. So uh, like we covered pyramidal structure, that's gonna be the template for how you take your photo. Then you're gonna develop your own background. So your own environment, it could be where you live, your community, uh, a place that you frequent a lot, or it may be a, a place that you wanna live in in the future. So develop your background, just work on thumbnails for right now. So pyramidal structure, take a photo, have someone take a photo of you, waist up. I think of the Mona Lisa. Use the pyramidal structure, you know, to uh, emphasize the most important part, which is you. Sketches. Second thing is to uh, answer the definitions or the terms on the uh, on the web quest, the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa web quest. Answer the questions for it. Make sure you take your portrait. Make, you, make sure you have someone take your portrait. Second thing is to do the web quest. The next thing is to do the starburst grid. If you don't have a printer, don't worry. You can always draw the grid on another sheet of paper and then look at your computer and draw SpongeBob uh, in a starburst grid that you create. So if you don't have a printer, don't worry. Just take your pencil, make your box, put the same starburst grid lines on it. It's only six lines and then draw SpongeBob so we can show that we know how to use the Starburst grid. There's a video on SchoolyG for you to watch as well that shows or explains how to use the Starburst grid. The Starburst grid we're going to use for the Mona Lisa project. So we're going to practice on the SpongeBob Starburst grid. It's uh, in SchoolyG under Starburst grid intro. Watch the video and again uh, complete the Starburst grid for the SpongeBob. After you take your photo, after you do the web quest, after you do the SpongeBob uh, grid, then you're going to start uh, in the thumbnails. Again, finish the thumbnails, how you want yourself to look, design your clothes, also design the environment behind, uh, the background behind. 
Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to me and I will uh, make sure you're on, on task. Uh, for everyone that's worried or confused, relax, chill out. Um, virtual, we're not doing it until this week when you're watching it. So if you're like, hey, I don't know what to do, it's late, don't worry, it's okay. Um, give us time. It takes time for us to make videos and make content that's consumable for our virtual students versus the physical students. So, um, like I said, just relax. It's not a big deal. Calm down. We're going to help you guys and we're going to all have awesome projects. So, again, any questions, comments, concerns, reach out to me and I'll make sure you guys are on the same page. All right? So, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your uh, Martin Luther King Day and have a great time. Okay?